Hello everyone, uh, my name is Jeff Carpenter, I'm a hammer thrower. Um, I've decided to make this video. Um, it's a training video for the weight. It's a very rudimentary, basic and fundamental uh, video. Um, and it's going to basically cover uh, when to engage uh, the hammer from the windup. And I've seen many windups but I see the engagement of the hammer wind up into the turn um, uh, really uh, beginning at the wrong time. Um, and I wanted to uh, cover that with you today and I have a couple training aids. I have uh, my beautiful burner driver. I'm not a golfer, but I get out and I hit the ball and I try to take the white off the ball as best as I can. And I'm gonna use um, my little 13 pound hammer here. Um, that I use as an aid and uh, just uh, when I'm trying to get engagement, just to do winds, just to do turns, on when to engage um, uh, the weight when you're beginning your throw. And that's where we need to begin. Um, just a little background, I got my start throwing the hammer with Gary Cowanson, Oak Grove High School down in San Jose throwing out of shot put ring. I moved up and saw some of the best throwers in the world, uh, Ed Burke, was uh, he's pretty much one of my idols since I was a kid and I was very very lucky and fortunate to throw with him for many many years uh, when I was in high school and after high school when I got out of the Marine Corps I uh, went to West Valley College I was part of the Explorer group um, Explorer post uh, with Ed Burke and I continued throwing along with Tor Gustafson up in Santa Cruz uh, went after West Valley uh, went to San Francisco State and uh, continued my hammer uh, throwing there from there I went to, um, I went with Peter Farmer out in North Carolina and uh, spent a lot of time with Peter, uh, a couple years, and uh, a lot of time with, uh, you know, weeks at a time with uh, Yuri Sadiq. And so I have a good overall round of, uh, of training and a um, uh, little expertise and tidbits that I collected from them and from the famous John Powell that we all know and love and uh, has always been big on drills and I, I am too. Uh, to begin with, uh, we want to talk about um, the wind-up, <clears throat> and I'm going to move this over here and kind of demonstrate the wind-up and when to engage when we are uh, uh, winding up, and I'm going to use this golf club. <clears throat> so since I was a child, I got taught how to pretty much hold um, the club. Um, where to position everything. But then I learned something early on when I, when I was uh, uh, in junior high school, when I went to my first golf club. Um, it's, uh, I learned something called the triangle. The triangle, so I'm gonna step to the side here. Uh, well, I'll, I'll, I'll step to the side here this way, so if I was driving out that way. Um, when, I, when I bring the club back to the position to where I begin to engage the club in the swing, I'll bring this, the club back here, and you'll see a triangle from my hands to my two elbows, from this elbow to this elbow. So there's a triangle. You can almost probably see it just missing the base here, correct? And that's, boom, when, when we engage that, it's from back here. Uh, we would never think of, now I'm gonna change and I'm hitting the ball that way. We would never think to engage the club when, when the club is in front of us. So what do I mean by that? Well, if I'm here and I'm, I've done my wind up with the hammer, now I'm kind of doing cross referencing and I have my triangle and then I bring the ball, the club, the hammer, the weight to this position and begin. This is how, if the ball's here on the tee and this is where this, this club is to hit that ball. When, when I see some of the throwers on on the recent postings on Instagram, I see this. They come down here, they have a beautiful wind up, and then boom, they have less than a foot to engage the ball to hit that. We would never think of that in golf. No, we would take the thing, the club, come back here, and boom, and keep our eye on the ball, and drive from here. This position from the back position, and then we would follow through. Same with the weight. So now I'm going to take, change over to the 13 pound and demonstrate. So 
if we're in this position, same position, right? We have the ball, we're engaging the weight ball from back in this position. We're doing our wind up and boom, the ball is behind us. And that's when we engage into the wind up from into the turn into the wind up pushing. If I'm sitting here where the camera is with my great son, who's camp photo, photo with all this, and we want to swing the ball to 90. We want to move the ball, push the ball, not drag the ball, push the ball to 90 from back here. So if I'm back in this position, the ball's behind me, if, I'm in the, if I've gotten into the triangle position, we can all see it better there. Same as the golf ball, a golf swing. We take that and we, and we swing it all the, way, all the way to 90, from behind us to 90. Now, if I take the hammer and I just let the, if I do my wind up around my head and then I, I engage the ball here, I push the ball from here, it would be no different from me uh, trying to hit the ball when it's right here and I've only got such a space of maybe a foot to strike that ball, that golf ball with the club to the same thing a lot of all the throws I've seen so far, they just let it drop. They take it from back here really nicely. They have their triangle, but then they drop it. I don't know if you can see the pronounced dropping, and then they and then they turn. If that is the case in your throw, and you and you can now feel about feel it, and now you know to take that. There's no there's no jerking. It's you pushing the ball all the way to the left, all the way to 90. Then take your step, and from back here, push that ball again, all the way to 90, from behind you. So the biggest issue that I see so far, um, and it's my plan to make three, three videos, um, beginning this Sunday, I'll make one next Sunday, and another element of the, the weight throw, and then a, a third video, the Sunday after next Sunday, and cover um, some other elements of the weight throw, since this is weight throwing season. Um, <clears throat> so to, to recover what I went over, I wanted to emphasize the triangle that we have here. When we have that ball, right, we're taking it and we're winding it, and we're taking it from behind us and pushing that ball all the way to the left. That's the most important element. There are other throwers <clears throat> that take the, 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 the hammer, right, the weight, they come up here and they do this. And then they bring it over here. Fine, if you wish to wind up that way, as long as you're taking the weight from behind you and then pushing it to the left, that works if it's not this. Here I come and then I go, no, you're trying to get momentum. So you engage the hammer weight from behind you. And we'll talk about the weight because that's what we're that's what we're really meaning is the weight throw. And so if you're taking it here, taking it back, and then whoom, and then drive it to the left, fine, that works. One other thing I've seen. Throwers starting with this in the back. They have the triangle, but they have the hammer weight on their back, resting here. Fine. If you want to throw that way, perfectly fine. As long as you take it and you take that ball from behind you, don't let it drop. Again, don't let it drop and then go because that's too late. Uh, I've seen this on many hammer throws and many weight throwing. <clears throat> and I will say that if you engage the ball when it's in front of you uh, in any of the two events, in the hammer or the weight, you, won't, you will not be able to, it will throw you and later on down in the um, sequential turns, you will be off balance. So uh, I one turn and two turn. Uh, because I look at the weight as a training aid uh, 
and a supplement accessory aid to the hammer. So in, in that regards, I want to do everything the same way in the hammer, except for I don't do multiple turns. Uh, and I'll tell you why. Um, I spent some time with Yuri, Yuri Sadiq, and I, and I spent some time with uh, John Powell. And um, the, the thing that I came up with is that, uh, especially from Yuri, you can get maximum acceleration in two turns, uh, whether it be in the hammer, whether it be in the weight. So I look at, well, why four turns, why three turns, why not one, two, with, specifically with the weight? And I feel that the uh, one or two turn is is perfect for a weight. If you want to do three, four, I mean, ha it's it's your throw, it's your style. As long as we engage the ball from the very beginning, and and we understand we need to take and push the ball from behind us. You need to do as many turns as you want, but you'll be more successful, way more successful, with engaging that ball behind us and pushing the ball all the way to 90. And again. I'm a one turner, uh, two turner. Um, boys throwing uh, great distances with the one turn because I engage that ball from behind me. The moment that I do my wind up into the turn, I engage that thing, right, that ball right from behind me and I push it to 90. And then I just do another turn, bam, I go. So uh, without getting too complicated into any of the other aspects of the throw, uh, the next um, uh, video that I have will be somewhat of a surprise. Um, I hope to have a better venue. Hope you enjoyed my yard and my son uh, doing the uh, recording. Uh, but this is something that I believe strongly in and I decided to make this video again uh, to emphasize the importance of when to start um, at the very, very beginning, when to start your wind up transition into a turn. Uh, again, I'll have a video coming up next week. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video and uh, it's such a beautiful day here in California and I hope it's uh, beautiful where you're at. If not, I've thrown in the snow. I know how wonderful and great a feeling that is and I hope you enjoyed it and have a great day. Thank you.